I'm Dr. Sidney Smith, and with me is Dr. Carl Oranger. We're here at the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions, where the new guidelines on lowering blood cholesterol have been presented. Carl has had a focus on those patients with LDL cholesterol greater than 190 or those with FH. Carl, what are the important points from the new guidelines? Well, I believe that the first point that physicians need to remember is that these patients are at high or very high risk. Uh, this has been uh, seen and confirmed in observational studies, uh, although we do not have randomized controlled trials showing benefit of treatment, but there is a lot of evidence that when put together suggests that greater benefit is seen when these patients are treated. And before we talk about any of that, it's also important that clinicians think about ruling out secondary causes of hypercholesterolemia. So you want to make sure that they're not hypothyroid. You'd like to look for uh, chronic kidney disease or liver disease that may cause elevations in LDL cholesterol. But the great majority of these patients have primary severe hypercholesterolemia and need to have their cholesterol levels lowered to reduce atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk. What's new in the guidelines? Has, has anything changed? Are we able to do more now than we could in 2013, or is it? Well, it is clear that since 2013, lots has changed in this area. First is that there was a randomized control trial showing that ezetimibe therapy reduces cardiovascular risk in uh, patients who have had a previous uh, cor acute coronary syndrome. So their LDL cholesterol level was uh, lowered more than just statin alone. Uh, and those patients had improved outcomes. Now, this was not specifically in a, in a group with, uh, hyper, with severe hypercholesterolemia, but it did demonstrate the efficacy of ezetimibe in secondary prevention. A major uh, addition in the literature since that time was uh, several trials on PCSK9 inhibitors. These drugs are very effective in lowering LDL cholesterol levels. They are injectable. Uh, and they should be used only in very high-risk patients. We generally think that the first step is to provide good lifestyle therapy for these patients. Simultaneously, we give them maximal tolerated statin. When the patients have LDL cholesterol levels that remain 100 milligrams per deciliter or greater, we would then consider the use of ezetimibe in these patients. And then finally, if despite the addition of ezetimibe to maximal tolerated statin, Results in, a PCS, results in an LDL cholesterol that remains 100 milligrams per deciliter or greater, that might be a situation in, in, a, in which a clinician could consider the addition of a PCSK9 inhibitor. Now, given the, uh, the, the power of the PCSK9 inhibition on LDL cholesterol, you have a patient with an LDL of 108 on a high-dose statin, maximal statin therapy, and ezetimibe, would you continue them on ezetimibe plus the statins, or would you stop the ezetimibe and start the uh, PCSK9 inhibitor? Well, it's a great question, and I think that, that in fact, uh, we do know that benefit in these patients with familial hypercholesterolemia seems to be greater when the LDL cholesterol is less than 100 milligrams per deciliter, recognizing that, these, that there is a certain variation around any number that you get. I think if you're very close to an LDL cholesterol of 100, the best step would be to repeat it and repeat it again. Find out if it is above or below. If it's very, very close, my personal preference in the clinic is I really push harder on lifestyle. I really go over again with them what they're eating, try to make sure that we are doing the best that we can with, with um, these types of interventions, lifestyle, statins, and ezetimibe. If it is a situation where the, where the patient has demonstrated that he or she is at very high risk and still has an LDL cholesterol uh, greater than or equal to 100 despite everything you've done, the evidence would suggest that the addition of a PCSK9 inhibitor would be of benefit in reducing cardiovascular events. And you would add that to the statin and acetamide? Yes, uh, it is always a stepwise process. It's interesting, clinicians should also be aware that although the the usual response with ezetimibe is to lower LDL cholesterol by about 15 to 20 percent. There are occasional patients who have a much greater reduction in LDL cholesterol. So it's always worthwhile starting ezetimibe first, in my uh, opinion, because first of all, it's generic, widely available, inexpensive, and in some people has very substantial LDL lowering effects. And continuing it with the PCSK9 inhibition, it's important to note 
that both Fourier and Odyssey outcomes did have a small percentage, under 5%, that were on both ezetimibe and statins and had PCSK9 inhibition uh, added. And that, and that really brings us back to the key point, which is with patients uh, who have severe primary hypercholesterolemia, lower LDL cholesterol with evidence-based therapies results in better ASCVD outcomes. Mm -hmm. So everything we can do to reduce that LDL cholesterol in these patients seems to be of benefit. Now, in your recommendations, are there any, is there any bracketing by age? Are you going up to 75? Do you extend this into an older age group? How, what do the recommendations well, tell us? Well, in general, patients with severe primary hypercholesterolemia between the ages of 20 and 75 should be treated exactly as we discussed. One caveat is that patients with documented heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, either documented by clinical criteria or by genetic, genetic criteria, we generally feel that the, ages, the age of 30 is where we go much more strongly in terms of therapy. Uh, it's not as clear that, that, um, that worsened outcomes occur in people under the age of uh, 30 when the diagnosis is made. So the bottom line would be that in those who are 30 to 75, we recommend getting that LDL cholesterol less than 100 milligrams per deciliter um, using whatever means we need to do it because outcomes are better. These individuals have been exposed to high cholesterol from the time that they're in utero. And uh, so the, the, uh, the longer duration seems to suggest that greater benefit can be achieved by initiating these therapies as early as 30, the very aggressive therapies. There was a uh, molecularly defined um, registry in Spain that looked at which of these patients were most likely to have events and they identified the age of 30 or greater and they identified LDL cholesterol of 100 or greater as two factors that really increased the likelihood of ASCVD events. Well, I think we, with the new guidelines, have a new opportunity to really make a difference for patients and their outcomes. And uh, thank you very much for your comments and help with this. Thank you, sir.